then they got a chance to rehabilitate themselves according to the Ramban, according to others. They got a new mitzvah of, of Bishkan to show that Hashem has actually been, will be with them at all times. And uh, that's beautiful, right? So, uh, the Ramban has one beautiful thing to say about this climax. The seal, if, if, we, if we look at, uh, just for, for fun, I think it might be there. At the very last page of uh, Shemot in the Ramban, Taf Kuf uh, Mem, um, the song. Let's see. Uh, the very last. No. No. Okay. Um, well, we will see it again. If there's a song, there's a poem at the end. Do you see that poem? Yes. yes. Sefer Hagula. This is the end of the book of redemption. Asher Hashem Elohei Yisrael Babo. That in which God, the Lord of the of Israel, came in it. Livnei Yisrael came in it to the people of Israel, to the children of Israel. Am Karovo the nation who is close to him, his, his relatives, his, you might say, his beloved ones, is right? He saved him from the hands of his enemy, and he redeemed him from the hand of his, of those who hate him and those who are his enemy, right? The synonyms. And Baruch Hashem HaChafetz Shalom Abdo, and Blessed is God who desires the peacefulness, the peace for his servant, meaning the servant Am Yisrael, Bnei Yisrael, Asher Adhena Azaro Lavo, who up to this point had helped him to come, right? The Jewish people had left Mitzrayim and Hashem had helped him to come to this point. What's this point? The end of the Mishkan building and at the, e at the end of the year, following the Matan Torah, and following their redemption from Mitzrayim, right? Okay? HaMechadeshnu Urav Bishivo, who God is, um, um, renews the youth, the young stature of their return. Now, this return might mean their I don't know that the Jewish people are resurrected you mean because they, they, they had come as a as a uh, with dignity and uh, stature when they came nobility when they came to Mitzrayim and then they were downtrodden as slaves and now they have come up to their youthful to their renewed renewed youth the, they had like in the old days I think I think, right? Unless you think about it as, as, as a, some, an allusion to their resurrection after their sinning, but I don't know, right? Bishivo. Hamasbia, Hamasbia Torah Torah Evo, who, God, who has sustained, has made them full, has satisfied them with his Torah, uh, the, has satisfied their hunger with his Torah. Vayinakeyud Vash Vechelbo, and he. Oh, you think it's too much noise? And he and he suckled him like a mother from the breast, right? Suckled him, let him drink from his breast honey and milk, right? Which is milk and honey that God has promised him. Ki hechin kol because he, God, had prepared his heart and to, to, I'm sorry, Bakro Arvo. What's that mean? And to for to his name, he to his blessed name, he. Oh, it's morning and night. I see. I see. Okay, he prepared the Jewish people's heart to his name. Who and will bless God, I suppose, in the morning and evening. Baruch she'achalnu mishalo v'chayinu itovo, which is of course a strange way to end it, right? Blessed is he who's, who, from whom hand we had eaten and that we had lived 
from his goodness. Beautiful poem, right? <coughs> but, but, last year we read something, uh, well, we read something, maybe it's in the beginning of the book. Remember, uh, the Ramban dedicates the beginning of this book. Yeah, I think. Look at the look at the beginning of the book, which is on our page, very very beginning, the first Ramban, in the book of Shmot. Did you look at that in the very very beginning of Shmot? Uh, pasuk uh, he, he, just before Pasuk Aleph. It happens to be Reish no, uh, Reish Ayin Tet, if you like. Yeah, there's a paragraph there. There you go, the very top. Sefer Ve'el Shmot. He's, he's introducing the book of Shmot, right? So he says, we have just finished. That, that's when we finished uh, Genesis, right? We finished Breshit. So we have just finished the book of Genesis. That is the book of creation. The Chidush HaOlam and, re, and the, the newness of the world, of the universe, right? And the creation of all creatures, of all created things. And this book also has dealt with the happenings of all our forefathers, right? Aram Yitzhak and Yaakov. Shehem ke'inyan Yitzirah lezaram, because they are, that's a very interesting comment, right? They, the forefathers, are like the f- creation, of, like, like the creation of the world is for all creatures, the forefathers are like our beginning, our creation, right? Uh, Am Yisrael was came into being, so to speak, just like the stars came into being by Hashem's uh, command, the forefathers came into, uh, we came into being as the result of the forefathers, right? Kinyan Yitzira Lezaran. That's a beautiful comment. And Pete Tavyad. Okay, fine. Good. Mipnei shekol mikrehem tziurei dvarim lirboz lahodia kol atid lavo lahem. That's an interesting thing we once saw in the Ramban, that he feels everything that happens to the forefathers in their lives, that are mentioned in the Torah, that is. Not that they went to the bathroom or they ate lunch, but things that the Torah discusses, important events, are a signpost to things that would happen to the Jewish people in some way or another, right? There are lessons for the future, there are warnings for the future, there are predictions for the future. It's hard to know, right? I mean, the Ramban takes it very seriously, that... I think it's a little spooky, but okay. And after God had completed the creation, Now comes this book, Shmot, right? Now we're finished the book of Yitzirah, which includes the forefathers, right, and all their things. We now are going, beginning to tell the story of what will be in the future of the Jewish people, which was hinted at in the life of the forefathers. Remember the Ramban, in what way? In what way, do you remember? How did the Ramban say there was hint of Egypt and the slavery in the times of the forefathers? Well, the obvious thing is Hashem said it will happen, right? Hashem said to Abraham, you know. But he says near Mazu, hinted in the events of the forefathers that that will happen also to the Jewish people. I mean, it's obvious, no? Abraham Avinu, the Ramban says, when there was hunger, he went down to Mitzrayim. Who asked him to go down to Mitzrayim? Right? He says, oh, Abraham did a bad thing. And? And? No. To Mitzrayim? At the time of the Rav in Israel. He says, Vayerid Abraham Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim. With Sarai. And he said, oh, you tell him that you tell them that you're my sister. Hashem never told him. Hashem never told him. Vayira av ba'aretz vayerid Avram Mitzrayim. So, so no. why, why he stayed? Why did he go? Why didn't he stay? Because there was a hunger, there was a famine. I mean, it was uh, maybe it was dangerous. There are other people who lived in Mitzrayim. Not everybody in the entire land of Canaan left Canaan. But right, Avram left Canaan. And why, went to why the exception with the, with Jacob? Jacob was the same thing. Jacob but, went uh, down to Mitzrayim. Talked to him. Hashem talked to him. He says he didn't say go. He said he I was going. He, he was going. He was going. And when he was on the border that night, he was afraid. Uh, maybe I shouldn't go. 
Hashem says, don't be afraid of going to Mitzrayim. I'm going to take care of you, and I will also bring you out. And uh, Yosef will cover his eyes and take care of you. That's not telling him to go to Mitzrayim. I mean, I think, okay, anyway, right? So at, at any rate, he there says, the Ramban himself says, that when Abraham went to Mitzrayim, that is a premonition of the time when, during famine, the Jewish people would go down to Mitzrayim and they would get stuck there. Abraham got into trouble in Mitzrayim, if you remember. His wife was taken, and he was almost, he right? He could have been killed. But then he came out with a great uh, wealth. Ah, right. uh, Israel will also go to Mitzrayim during a Ra'av. They will be oppressed, like Abraham was oppressed for a time, although they for much longer. And they will go out with a great wealth. You know, so he sees a parallel hmm. in those things, okay? V'nit yached sefer ve'ele shmod v'inyana galut harishon hanigzar. And... The, the, this book is dedicated, or at least in the beginning, of Shmod, it, to discuss the exile, the first exile Fair. that was ordained, that was uh, preordained, that was re decreed. Beperush uvigula mimenu. Right? That was once re de de decreed by God specifically to Abraham that this would happen, and also the redemption from it. That's what this book is going to discuss. Therefore, he tries to start, even though the end of the book of Genesis talked about Yaakov leaving and who, and he came to Mitzrayim and Yosef was there. Now, yeah, I mean, that already ended in the book of Genesis that they were already in Mitzrayim, right? But because this is going to be at the beginning of the story of the slavery, he starts again to tell you about those who came down there and their, their names, right? right? Good. Um... Umisparam and their numbers. Even though it was already discussed, because now we want to get a flashback to the time that they went back, because that's the beginning of their slavery, which is which is the time that their exile began. You see that when they went down to Mitzrayim and things were fine under Yosef. And they had a good shepherd, and they took over the land of of, uh, of uh, Goshen and so on. The Ramban considers that the beginning of their exile. Okay, meaning that when we're in Muncie and we have Cadillacs, we shouldn't think that this is not exile. Fihine, right? <laughs> let that be a lesson to you. Our friend Eliyahu, who's going to get the chance soon to travel. Fihine, hagalut eneno nishlam. Ad yom shuvam el mokomam, and therefore their exile is not completed, is not ended until they return to their place. place. What's their place? The place. Vel malata v'tam yeshu. And which one? What place? El mokomam. Which place is that? To Israel. To Eretz Canaan. Right. Eretz Canaan. Right. And to the stature of their forefathers, they will return. Meaning, I suppose, spiritual stature and also dignity. I mean, they were considered, you know, uh, uh, you know, remember when Abraham wanted to, you're the prince of the Lord among us, right? That's right. 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 And when they went out of Mitzrayim, right. even though they left, the house of bondage, they still are considered to be exiles because they are in a land not their own. Another, you know, the Ramban is very tough. You, you know, the Ramban all his life wanted to go to Eretz Israel, and he, you remember, felt that Eretz Israel, living in Eretz Israel, is a mitzvah from the 613 mitzvot. We once talked about this, others do not agree because it allows you to do mitzvot that you couldn't do, but by itself it's not a mitzvot. He felt it is one of the tired mitzvot. A person is not defined as being uh, not in exile unless he is in Eretz Israel, right? Nibuchim mm Bamidbar, -hmm. wandering, uh, bewildered in the desert. Ukesheba'u el Har Sinai. Now listen to this. So, 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 until now, Pinky, until now, what, when is the end of the exile going to be? When they come to... There is Israel. Therefore, the book, the book of Shemot, that he says, is going to tell the story 
about the beginning of their exile until its end. Their Gula. The Gula is not finished, even though they came out of Mitzrayim, because they're wandering in the desert. It's not a Gula yet, right? They're still Golim. So now, how come does the book of Shemot not continue until they come to Eretz Yisrael? It's, not, it's still exile. And we still have Vayikra, Bamidvar, Dvarim, and they're not in Eretz Yisrael yet. They go on to still Yehoshua when they get into Eretz Yisrael. So listen to what he says. This is important. Ready? This is the play. When they come to the mountain of Zion, of Sinai, they make the Mishkan, which is our climax at the end. That's what I'm trying to come to, right? That's our Parsha today. And God, the Lord, returned to them. Who? And he put his, he established his Presence, yes. right? Be among them. As Shavu El Malata Votam, then they return to the high point of their forefathers. Shayas Sodeloha Alay Alay Ohalehem. That their forefathers were such that the secret or the presence of their God was on their tent. You remember the Ramban used the Pasuk uh, Abraham Hashem. So Vehem Hem Hamerkaba, and they were like the chariot upon which God traveled, right? It was brought into the world. And suddenly, suddenly, they are now called redeemed. Redeemed. He is still now, he has said, redeems means coming to Eretz Israel. You're not redeemed until you come back to Eretz Israel. Now he's saying, no, 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 wait. There is, the reason this book ends what it does is with the Mishkan and the Shekhinah coming down to the Mishkan among them is that at that point, they, because God is among them and is there in their home, they no longer, they no longer differentiate between any land. I mean, the, their homeland is where God is. You know what I mean? It's, he's trying to say this, they are now Gulim. Therefore, this book can end the book of redemption, right? That's what it's called, Sefer Agula, Shmot. The book of redemption can end when the completion of the Mishkan and the Kavod Hashem, Maleoto Tamid, and with the God's presence come among them permanently. Mm-hmm. Now that's an incredible statement, right? This is the Zionist, you understand? This is the Ramban who says that it's a mitzvah do right uh, from the 613 to go to Eretz Yisrael. And if a person is in Chutz Laaretz, he's like a person without a God. Remember all those things he said. And he said all the mitzvot that we do in Chutz Laaretz is just practice. It's not even, you know. I mean, he's the strong one. He's the strongest one among all the Rishonim, right, who talks like this about being outside of Eretz Yisrael. He seems to, to, to get this philosophy because that seems to be contradicted by Sefer Gula. You can't call... Shmot Sefer Gula, if they end still in the desert at this point. Say, no, 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 you don't understand. When God comes among them, they transcend place. There is no space anymore, right? There, there, there's no geography. Because they carry a God with them everywhere they go. They're in empty space. They're like in... in... So he does accept the, the, the thing, which I remember now from the beginning of the book, that's what I wanted to say, is that the climax now of Shekhinah coming down among them somehow makes their their physical surroundings no longer counts. Because he's... he's they're a different person. They're a different humanity. They're, they're, right? they're redeemed. He's skipping over the, um, the exile. Yeah, he did the tshuva. He came back. Hashem comes. He does, he does, yeah, he does, they, they, they are wandering and in galut until the climax that we're going to see in our parsha. Until Hashem actually comes to them. A lot of things happen until then. They rebelled at the water. They rebelled before uh, before Kriyat Yam Suf. Even they, you know, they did a lot of things. So at but, this, but at, at this point, there's a climax. This is like at this point, we can say that the 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 spies they were right. According to the yeah, Rambam. sure. The spies then would say, "Look, the Ramban tells us that we are redeemed. So, so why here. should we go anywhere else? <laughs> exactly. We are well, there are places to meet, live. You, 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 you point out a very good thing. Here. You point out a very nice idea. That's right. Some people say the spies were really such holy people that they felt, look, I mean, who needs to go over there and start living like natural human beings? You know, plowing the fields. We, we eat man every morning. We see the 
clouds of glory, we're surrounded by God. Who, who would want a different existence than this, right? God is the one who wanted a different existence for us than that. But uh, they, I, they could uh, be understood, no? According to this, it's wonderful. This is the high point. This is the climax of all life. This is. I mean, Pinky, if, if God came to your house and he sat there in the kitchen with you every day, right, would you want to go anywhere else? <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. Never mind. Um, no. I wouldn't mind going there to be alone. <laughs> you would say, excuse me, God, I'm leaving. I've got to go. go. i got to go somewhere. I'm packing to my I house. Have you stick around here. I'll, I'll see you later. I don't know. No, 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 of course, God will come along with you there, Israel. That's the point. Of course, that's what he told them, right? I'm, God is going to go ahead of you, and he's going to help you to conquer the land, and he's going to bless you in this land. He's going to, I mean, yeah, of course, Moshe is telling them that there's another step, but he calls this the Gula. You're no longer an exile, let's say. You haven't gotten where God wants you to be yet, but you're no longer exiled. You might be... You might be in a foreign place. You might be in a strange land, right? But you're not in exile. Now, it's a very, it's a psychological, it's a spiritual exile we're talking about. It's not a physical, because they're still physically, you know, nowhere. Nowhere. Sand dunes and sun is beating down. And it's, I mean, who knows where it is? You don't even know where we are. But, but we're not exiles because we are a people. God is in among, among us. We were given the Torah. We can live a spiritual life. We're not exiles. It's a very important thing. Yeah, so the sages of the Talmud, uh, uh, they are very... Yeah, or Eliyahu Bayona, when he's in a prison cell, and he feels like God has actually communicated to him, he's, uh, he doesn't feel like he's in prison anymore. He's uh, transcendent. When Eliyahu Sharansky said, you know, Right? right? I don't know what's going to happen to me, but I know that you are with me, so I don't, I don't, I no longer feel the thing suffering. that I'm, you know, upset or uh, that mm -hmm. I am in danger or that I am, I don't feel it. I may be, I, uh, I may not make it. I mean, that's my position anyway. That I may not make it. I may not be alive. I don't know what Sharansky meant by that, or whether he meant, I know I'm going to live. Through yeah, this. I don't know. I don't know. But if he, but it's possible to feel redeemed because he's even he's, at the last moment, right? You could be feel redeemed. He's right there, exactly. Uh, so no I, I think that, that that paragraph to me is like really incredible. Uh, right. This one we just now read at the end. Yeah. That's called the climax of the Sefer Agula. You know what I mean? That there's something missing here. You would think Sefer Agula. Hashem told the people. I'm going to redeem you, I'm going to take you out of Mitzrayim, I'm going to be your God, and I'm going to take you to the land of Israel. Right? I mean, he told them. So it seems like the process was not finished. Gula is not yet there, right? But the Rabban says the Matan Torah and Shechina among them is the climax of Gula. After this, there's a lot of things yet to be done, but that's just... Uh, they're carrying their land with them, so to speak, everywhere they go. So, of course, that's what some people say was the reason Hashem gave the Torah in Har Sinai, too. But it's not geographically. The Torah is not geographically possessed by Eretz Israel, right? The Torah was in an empty nowhere land, right? P carried with the people, wherever they go. It's internalized. The Aron has poles that never come out of the Aron because it's always portable wherever you go. Right? I mean, all those ideas suggest that on the spiritual level, there is no geography. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting, and that's the Ramban who says that Dafka, there is geography to the spiritual level. I mean, it's very complicated, no? Mm -hmm. But it's very beautiful. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. So now, I mean, <clears throat> if you want, the, the actual entry of the, of the Shechina to the tent is discussed in Tav Kuf Lamed Tet, which is in uh, chapter 40, verse 34. Lamed Dalet. Vayichasa Nanet Tolem Oyev. See that? That's like the last, uh, last, last Rabban. We can work backwards. There's one or two like this. <laughs> <coughs> if you want to know when this was, we could talk about that in a previous Rabban. But let's look at the actual phenomenon. What's happening? 
Plamen dot it is here. Top to plumb and check. The, the next the previous page one one back. Top to plumb and check. <coughs> right? And it's uh, it's chapter forty verse uh, thirty four. You see it? Forty thirty four. The Pasuk itself, you can probably tell us it by heart, no? Um, 34, ready? Vayichase anan et oil moed, ukvod Hashem maleit ha-mishkan. The cloud covered, or hovered over, covered the tent of meeting, and the presence, or the glory of God, filled the tent. Now, those are two different things. Mm -hmm. That's what the Ramban is going to have. The tent, it, it sort of seems... <coughs> Opposite. Why, why is it called the tent of meeting? Because that's where Iva Eid Shama. Remember, this is the tent in which I will meet with you to speak with you. He's, he called, Moshe Hashem himself had called this tent the Ohel Moed. Iva Eid Shama Ledaberedaka. Something like that. Remember that? Iva the, the The rendezvous tent. Va'ad. Va'ad is a meeting or a conference, uh, uh, an encounter. Uh, yeah, the, the place in which we meet. Right? <coughs> so, <coughs> but it seems opposite. I, I'm just trying to say that the Ramban, what's bothering the Ramban and other Mepharshim is you usually might say the, the presence of God enters the Mishkan and then there's, an, there's a cloud you know, covering it. He, he says the covering of the t of, on the tent first, and the presence of God filled the, top the tent, the, filled the, rest of the tent inside. Right now, does that remind you a little bit of Har Sinai? What? Remember, there was Hashan, there was Arafel, there was the darkness on top of the mountain, and there was a fire or <laughs> seeing within, and. Moshe goes up El Arafel, goes into the darkness, Asher Shama Elohim, where God is. So he enters, right? So there's a cover, right? And we should remind you also about Yom Kippur, when the Kohen Gadol goes into Kodesh Kodashim, he goes into the Kodesh Kodashim and he lights the Ketoret, so the, the smoke fills the Kodesh Kodashim. Right? So there's a We'll see. It, there's a parallel. Velo yachol Moshe lavo elo moed, and Moshe could not enter. Like this next pasuk, lamed hey, could not enter the the tent of meeting. Ki shachan ala ve'anan, because no, you, you, that's, I'm just reading the Torah. Uh, mm -hmm. The the next pasuk said what happened. And you just now read, right? Kol asher balei gamishkan. Velo yachol Moshe lavo elo moed. Moshe could not enter the tent of meeting. Because ki shachan alav he'anan, because the cloud had descended upon it, who kvod Hashem malei damishkan, repeating, and the glory of God filled the tent, filled the mishkan. So we t first I tell you the cloud covered, because and uh, and Hashem's glory came in, and Moshe could not come in because the cloud covered and Hashem and the, and the glory of Hashem was in. repetitious a little bit. You could also say, and Moshe couldn't enter, and therefore Moshe couldn't enter. In. You're just repeating it, right? Mm -hmm. The cloud came down, Hashem fills the tent. Moshe couldn't get in, because couldn't go in, because the cloud came down and Hashem was in. Alright? Right? Mm -hmm. And then it tells you that when the Anan would rise, they would usually travel, and so on and so on. Right? Okay? So here, look at this Raman uh, Lamentet, Laman Dalit. <coughs> I want to tell you the description. First, what's, what, what actually happened? Right? The cloud, are you ready? Uh, 34. Yes. Discussion, yeah? The cloud covered the Ohel Moed on all its surfaces, all its sides. So it's not just above, right? Try to imagine you're looking at the Ohel Moed, suddenly you can't see it. Because the cloud is all around, surrounding it, right? And anybody who, who looks at the movie, or has a painting, or imagines in their 
your childhood or school, usually you feel like there's a Mishkan, right? And there's a hovering cloud above it. Right? That's not what you say. Right? Just shh, hide the whole thing. Right? And it, the tent, is covered in immersed in it. Tamun, uh, meaning, you know, Tamun means like in a box. Covered, completely, surrounded. Okay? And the glory of God fills the Mishkan. Because the inner content of the Mishkan is filled with God's glory. Because, this is interesting, right? I mean, because the glory of God dwells yeah. inside the cloud and inside the Mishkan right? so the cloud surrounds it and the glory is in, in within the cloud within the Mishkan now you notice we, we talked about how this might be hinted like it would say in Har Sinai El Ha'arafel Asher Shammar Elohim that he was completely enveloped Moshe when he went in he went into the place where God was completely surrounded by this Arafel good Amar. Arafel, by the way, is even darker than dark. I mean, it's sort of like a, a mist that you could... Arafel is one of the words, I think, that is used by Yamash Choshech, like the Makat Choshech, was a, a darkness that is felt. You can almost touch the darkness, not just the absence of light, but a, a substance mm-hmm. of darkness. Ve'amar. Ki lo yachol Moshe lavo elo el moed afilu el petach mipnei shahayayin an mechaseito. And we are told here now, that Moshe could not come to Oyamayit even to the entrance because the cloud was covering it, right? And he was not permitted to come inside the Anan. <clears throat> so he's telling you two things. He couldn't come and he wasn't permitted to come. Mm-hmm. Why can't you come? Because the cloud is covering the whole thing and you can't even see where the door is. I mean, I suppose it's, uh, maybe it was even a, a barrier. Could you think of maybe the cloud was like a force barrier that you couldn't penetrate. He could not come, and he was not permitted to come. The ode, and also, ki ha-mishkan malei kvod Hashem, ve'ech yichanes bo. He's trying to understand our repeated pasuk, remember? The, the cloud covered, and the mishkan was filled with glory of God, and Moshe couldn't come because the cloud covered, and the mishkan was filled with the glory of God. A repetition, right? right? So he's saying that was the response of Moshe. He could not go because physically you couldn't penetrate the cloud, and second of all, he wasn't permitted to because how could he dare to go in to the Mishkan when God's glory filled it? Um, <coughs> Moshe was able to go places where the... Um, where the Kohanim could not. So if that's your question. Why couldn't he go in? Who says that? Why, why wasn't he permitted to go? That's the next sentence. The Hatam. And the reason, right? Because remember, every time Moshe wanted to speak to God, he would come to oh, the opening of the Mishkan, or the opening of his tent, and God would come and speak to him, and then he would come and tell the people what they wanted, to, what they needed to hear. I mean, they didn't seem, this is, a, this is a different event. Now the Mishkan, the Shechina actually comes down. Now he's not permitted to come. Why? The Hatam, Shelo Yavo Sham Below Reshut, because now he cannot come there without permission. Aval Yikra Oto, Ve'yavo Betoch Ha'anal, but only when God calls him and then he would come into the cloud in the future, right? Kasherasa Bahar Sinai, just like in Har Sinai, another model. Because, because he, it says, Vayikra el Moshe biyom ha-shvi'i mitoche anan. There too it says, and God called to Moshe on the seventh day from inside the cloud. So come he up follow to the, the, the son of the, or his voice, and then. And then come in. God, yes. God tells him, come on in. Until then, he has no permission. And it's just like Arsinai, right? He couldn't just go. He was invited to come. <coughs> and that's why, by the way, the very next pasuk after Shmot, what's the first pasuk after Shmot? Vayikra. Vayikra. He says when God calls him, right? Vayikra el Moshe. And God calls to Moshe. Me'o el Moed lemor. So he says, he could not go now unless he's called. Well, of course, he's called soon, right? Right? 
ואמר, ויבוא משה לאותו חנן, and there, after he was invited, it says, the next פסוק, and משה goes, after permission, he goes into the cloud. Okay? So now, he has two asterisks here, about below Rishut, below Kirim, and here, one second, ויבוא לאותו חנן, ועשה לומר, לכן נשמחה על הפרשה הזו, פרשת ויקרא. Oh, yeah, he says it in the footnote, you notice? That's why this, this parsha is right next to Vayikra, because there, it says Vayikra, after this parsha, that he calls him, after all, right? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, but, but Moses could come into the, to the, to the tent because he was listening to his voice or because Hashem opened a, a way to he can walk. It's different. I don't know, that's what's different, I don't know. He says, Betoka Anan, that he goes into the cloud. Maybe Hashem turns on a switch and the force cloud uh, disappears. Is, no, it doesn't disappear, it just lets you in. You know, like the science fiction movies, you try to go yeah. and, you, and you don't see anything, but you stop, you couldn't go, me, and then somebody goes... It's more like, uh, yeah. if we are in darkness, in darkness here, and er everything is, is dark, cool, cool. nobody cloud. And you and are Hashem calls you me. are over there, Pink is over there. And I call you. And you call me. From the dark. From the dark. You I hear my voice. I hear your voice. Follow my voice. Come right follow in. Follow your voice. Come I right into the dark. Exactly. You, you don't because know what's your voice. A, because, because my voice is there, right, because he's calling him, it could be that he just walks in. Like in Har Sinai, there was no opening in the Arapel. Mm -hmm. It says, Vayavo El Toche Anan. El Arapel. Hashem looking. So he walks right in. This is... To the Ramban, the model of the Mishkan is a repetition of Harsinai. Remember, we read that before. These Kruvim with their arms up in gold is like the fire on Harsinai, uh, you know, and you can't walk into the Kodesh Kadashim like the people who weren't allowed to go on to the Harsinai. Hashem speaks to God, to mankind from there, just like he spoke to mankind from Harsinai. I mean, the whole, uh, remember, the Ramban, the Ramban has reviewed that. Uh, that the model of the Mishkan is to remind the people of their standing on Har Sinai and carrying Har Sinai with them everywhere they go. That's the Mishkan. You know? uh, so here he says the same thing again, right? Just like in Har Sinai, the phenomenon of the Anan coming down for seven days, Moshe was out, and Hashem calls him, come on up. Right? But we are doing the same thing. Same thing here. We are carrying. Shoes we are everywhere. We are doing what? Carrying our shoes, our synagogues our shoes. everywhere. <laughs> Why we have that attitude. Why we have the consciousness of it, yeah? Well, there is a shot. Now he's going to say, <coughs> according to the simple understanding, because where are you, sir? are you with me? Right? And according to the simple understanding, because God said to him, God, it's, it says, Hashem spoke to Moshe from Oel Moed. Lo nichnas Moshe la Mishkan, aval kara oto me oel moed, v'amad petach oel moed, v'ay dever elav, right? According to most, if you, if you look at the psukim, simply, right? Uh, where is it? Uh, it doesn't say that here. Whenever it says, and the psukim, uh, here he's going to have the quote, me oel moed means number two, vayikra. Okay, now in the next pasuk, we were going to say, the next book, in, in uh, the book of Vayikra, it says, Vayikra el Moshe, Vayidaber Hashem elav me'o el moed leimor. That's the very first pasuk in, in Vayikra. Right? Mm -hmm. Pinky, you read that a couple, few times, probably, right? Mm -hmm. So it says, Vayidaber Hashem elav me'o el moed leimor. That means God spoke to him from the beating tent. Not in the beating tent, but from Right? So in the plain understanding of the Pasuk, it would sound like Hashem calls him, so he comes into the cloud, right? And he goes to the entrance. But he doesn't go into the entrance, because when he got to the entrance, through the cloud, Hashem, who is inside the tent, so to speak, I mean, his, his presence is inside the tent, speaks to him from the tent, and Moshe hears the voice speaking to him there, at the entrance. So you would think, he doesn't actually go into mm -hmm. Oel Moed. Sounds like, right? Mm -hmm. He spoke to him from Oel Moed. We say there, so far, Alder HaKapshat, that's what you would say, right? Velo nichnas Moshe la Mishkan, he doesn't go in, right? We're talking about the Ramban. And the Ramban says he doesn't actually go in. Aval kara oto me Oel Moed, but God calls him from the tent. 
ve'amad petach or moed, right? The very and he stands, Moshe stands at the entrance, and Hashem speaks to him. We say there so far. Then he says, "V'rabotenu amru." However, our rabbis have said, "Kavod katuv echad omer v'lo yachol Moshe lavo elo moed." We have just now said that Moshe, until he's called, it says Moshe could not go into to Oel Moed. They think that means going into, right? Moshe cannot go into Oel Moed because the cloud is there and because Hashem is presence is there. That means, and that, that means, Uvekatuvacher Omer Uvevo Moshe El Oel Moed. And there's another te, um, in Bamidbar, uh, verse. Chapter 7, verse 89, it says, And when Moshe would come to Oel Moed. Well, we just now said, Loyachol Moshe Lavo. And then the midwire it says, And when Moshe went into Oel Moed. So that would sound like a contradiction, right? Right? Bichriu, therefore, and they decided to satisfy this contradiction by saying, Kishachan alav. Anan. It's only when the cloud was on it in our chapter that he could not go into Oel Moed, right? Kila mm-hmm. da'atam, because according to their opinion, uvo'o Moshe el Oel Moed, she'avo sham belo kriya mida'ato, that Moshe can enter the Oel Moed on his own volition, without being invited, right? That would sound like, right? O mitnei she'amar sham, or because God there, Moshe there, hears the God's voice from talking to him from the parochet, from, from Kaporet, from the place where the Aron is. So it seems to them, right? if he hears the voice of God coming to him from the Kaporet, which is right on top of the Aron, that means he is inside the tent. According to that understanding, he's inside the tent and Hashem speaks to him from the Kaporet. And the other Pasuk says that he could not go in, right? Could not go in, that he had stood at the, at the entrance and heard. So, how do you satisfy these contradictions? The whole eight, and Moshe could do this at any time he wants, according to that, right? The whole eight. Heyot, Kavod Hashem, Maleet Amishkan, Lo Nichnas Moshe Vitocho. But there were times when the glory of God filled the entire Mishkan, that's when Moshe cannot go in. So according to the Pshat, you have to see that there are two different states of existence of the Mishkan. It's not all the, at, all the time the same, right? Mm-hmm. Normally, normally, for example, the coin goes in and brings a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. That's not a time when the Kavod Hashem Malay at Mishkan, right? Because even Moshe couldn't go in at that time, right? Hashem is not so talking to him. He, and, of course not. Yeah, but he, but he could go in. If, 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 if Hashem, once Hashem dwelled in the Mishkan, if it's always the same, then nobody would ever go into the Mishkan, right? right. Even Moshe couldn't go into the Mishkan and is only invited to speak to him at the door, right? That's in Vayikra, right? But in Bamidbar, it sounds like Moshe would go into the uh, into the Mishkan and Hashem would speak to him from the Kaporet, right? He does go in. And of course, a Kohen goes in every morning. Even standing outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Of course, it is conceivable. But but what about the coin? I mean, there are other human beings who go into the Mishkan every day. Yom Kippur, even the the, uh, the, the coin all goes to the Kodesh Kodeshim, but the, the, the reg- regular part of the Mishkan, everybody goes to it and do it. Yeah, all the Kohanim go in there. Hmm. Right? And even and even I, a simple Jew, can bring a korban and stand at the door po- at the doorway. I mean. You know, it doesn't sound like there's a barrier there all the time. What's going on? How do you uh, understand this? So he, well, he would say... What about it? It says it's a variant. What about it? When does it go on? Well, we assume if you, if you... I don't know why it's relevant right here, but if you if you like, his face was radiant from the time he came back down from Har Sinai, with the Luchot, the second Luchot, and it would continue to be that way until he died, if you want to know. And he would cover his face at all times when he was walking around doing his normal life. And when he spoke to the people, when he spoke to God, he took it off. 
And when he spoke to the people God's words, he took it off. That's what we learned before, right? Tell him nobody close his eyes. At that point, when he's speaking God's word, I suppose maybe people look down because they were a little awestruck, but, but they, they heard God's words. He, he would take off the mask then because then he wants them to see God's you know, light. So, yeah, yeah, that's what we learned. So, but anyway, so we have to say that there is this phenomenon of Hashem coming down to the Mishkan the first time, right? And maybe a few other times, maybe a few other times, because it does say this a few times. We'll see in a moment. There are a few times in history when Hashem's glory, it becomes visible to the people, right? Merabin was one of them, by the way. It usually happens at a crisis. A crisis, when the people are really so bad, so bad, so bad, that God steps in. It happened in Korach's time, and it happened in Meraglim's time. There are times when Hashem nira, nira Hashem el al right? But let's say now, this climax, the cloud comes down, Hashem dwells in the al for the first time, this is the consecration of the Omoid. At that point, nobody can come in. Nobody can come in. What does happen is Hashem could invite Moshe. Even Moshe can't, come, can't go in. right? Moshe can't go inside for sure, and he can't even go into the cloud. We have just learned now that Vayikra comes next. He can only be called. If he's called, at that point when everything is dwelling complete and the cloud is covering everything, when he's called, he goes to the door. Hashem speaks to him outside the door. That's what we have said. What about Bamidbar, which suggests that Moshe would sometimes go in seemingly without an invitation. And then Hashem speaks to him from the Kaporet, which is inside. According to that understanding, you would say, well, you know, the normal life of the Mishkan was not with this cloud covering the whole thing and the glory of God completely filling the Ohel. Not every day. So he could not come enter. enter. So then Moshe could cut enter. The Kohen goes in there in the morning to, to sacrifice. Uh, the day. other Kohen goes in to light the menorah. I mean, of course they go in. That's every day. Every day. Every night. Every day. Who comes by then? Um, not to the uh, to the Kodesh Kodashim I'm talking about. To the menorah and the Korah. Did, 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 um, did Moshe go in? Okay. Yeah, okay, okay he could. Okay, he could. Whatever fine. he wanted. Did the Kodesh Kodashim? No, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know that. He didn't. He doesn't. He doesn't suggest that. He 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 was able to go right. Then when the Mishka, when the Mishkan was filled with the glory of God, he could not go in. So if you never knew this before, you know now that there were two uh, states of the Shechina and the Mishkan. It wasn't all the same all the time, right? Mishkan is filled with the glory of God to demonstrate God coming down the first time, maybe a couple of other times. And other times, it was a holy place, right? But Moshe could go in, Kohanim could go in, right? Every day, just not into the Kodesh Kodeshim, on a normal day. And there's no cloud covering the entire Mishkan every day, right? Maybe there's a cloud hovering above, because if you remember, we read soon in our Parsha, right after what we just read, it says, and when the cloud would rise up from the Mishkan, then people would travel, and when the cloud goes back down, they would rest. Well, what does that mean? It's not the same cloud covering it and all the way around that nobody could go in. It's the cloud that I told you that the movie shows, right? Or that the kids learn about. I said the cloud is, in all of our pictures of it in our minds, the cloud is hovering above the Mishkan. And the people are living around the Mishkan. And the Kohanim go in and out, and, the, and Moshe goes in and out. Right? And Hashem speaks to Moshe from the Kaporet, but he is inside. Right? That's the normal day. And the cloud is hovering above like an umbrella. Right? And then, to show the people that they should travel, the cloud goes up above, even higher. Right? And then the people say, oh, I guess we're going to travel today. Right? And they pack up and they go. Then the cloud comes down over the Mishkan, over the Kohanim, I suppose, and that's where they're going to rest. But, at but this, at this point, once in a while, in climactic events, the cloud really comes down and covers everything, and the Mishkan is covered with the, the glory of God, then contains the glory of God, then nobody goes in. For a period, I don't know, an hour, two, a moment, I don't know what it is, right? I mean, But most of this coming till Kodesh Kodashim? Till, 
Imagine. <laughs> sounds like. Sounds like. It says, and, and Hashem is speaking to him from the Kaporet. So I suppose do the Rambans pictures it. I mean, I don't know. Like uh, Ramban pictures it that he's standing from behind the from behind the veil the of the Kodesh Kodesh. Sounds like. What right? happens when um, on the day on the day that um, Moshe was in Mishares before he transferred to the Mishkan has not come in. The glory of God has not yet come, right? But that wasn't consecrated yet. That was practice. When they were it's right? exciting. That was, he, he was teaching the Koranim every day how to do the Koranim, how to do the Korbanot. That's what we're going to, if you want to do that, Ramban, we do it. We did it once. Remember, yeah. there were seven days that he right. did that with them. And then the last he one is when the Koranim did themselves, you know, Aaron and his sons would do it themselves. And then at the end of that day, it still didn't come down. And he went in with, with Aaron to pray. And then, boom, the Mishkan Hashem comes down, the fire comes down and consumes the that's what we just now, that's the Pasuk just before where we are now, the climax. Right. right. Okay, let's go. And therefore they will say, the rabbis, that when he goes in, when he goes in, and Hashem speaks to him from the Kaporet, that's when the Anan had departed. That's what I just said. Now it's no longer covering the old place. Not that it disappeared completely. But the cloud withdrew from covering the entire tent, all the way around. And at that point, the glory of God does not permeate or fill the entire Mishkan. Just like we've said just now. This event, when the cloud covered everything and God filled the entire Mishkan, only happened, he said, on this eighth day, the eighth day, when the glory of God descended. Now, he doesn't want to tell us, I don't know, maybe he disagrees, because it says, Hashem el kol ha'am, at the time of the Miraglim and the Korah too, so maybe he thinks it wasn't quite the same. Maybe they saw something, but it wasn't quite the same as filling it the same way as this. I don't know, I don't know. I, I was just assuming that the expression was used in a similar way there. You know what I mean, Pinky? But he says it only happened here. This is at the climax, to show them that God had come. The Hakriya and this Vayikra, next next chapter, Hakriya Shamar Vayikra El Moshe Vayidver Sham Elav Me Oil Moed, right? When he spoke to him from the tent, means he didn't actually go into the tent, but from Al Datam, the rabbis who have said this, Kodam Lachem Haita Kasher Pirashti Lamala. That is before, before the cloud goes, oh, before meaning, before meaning, oh, why doesn't he say that it's before, may only more, wait a second, kodem lechein biyom rishon shal meruyim, v'tzorif lomai sh'af pi, af al pi sh'adayin lo kisar na mikol makom mutzrach piyah v'dina rishut l'pnei hakavot sh'al ha'pahoret. Oh, I don't know why he goes to this conclusion. Right, you know, you see what he's trying to say now, that when it says Vayikra, the next chapter, he says that's before these seven days. Ah, uh, you have, you, we haven't started Vayikra yet, but you remember last year, we had a problem with Vayikra. Here it says, Mosh Hashem had already come down. This is the climax, right? But, we haven't come to Vayikra. We haven't to come to, we haven't come to the Parsha of Sav, and we haven't come to the Parsha of Shmini which is talking about the eighth day, three parshas from now, right? So everybody has to say that the description of the eighth day is what we are discussing here at our parsha of Shemot, mixed up, mm -hmm. direct order of things, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to say that Vayikra is in order, but Vayikra is a, is a flashback, in other words, from Vayikra all the way through Shemini, happened before this chapter that we just now read. Because that's the climax of Hashem coming down. 
So the climax is after by Yikra and Tzav and Shmini. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so we before had assumed that Vayikra was a god inviting him because he couldn't come in because the cloud was there and it, it, it filled the, the Oel Moed and he only invited him to, up to the door. But now you don't have to say that anymore because the whole thing ahead it does, isn't really ahead of this. It's before this. All right? Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, when God told him, okay, you're going to practice the seven days, and then after that, you'll teach the Kohanim, and this is the way it's going to go, and then Yom Shmini comes, and Hashem, and Hashem tells him, okay, today Aaron is going to do it. And he does it. That should be read before our chapter today. Right? That's what happened. Then comes the climax of Hashem. And during that time, Moshe, he says, was invited to come into Ol Moed whenever up to, and, and Hashem would speak to him, right? Then comes the climax, and the cloud comes down, and Hashem feels the glory. He cannot go in. He cannot go in anymore, right? But that is only temporary. It only happened this one day, or maybe part of the day. I don't know, right? This one day when Hashem came down. After that, Moshe could come in even without invitation. Why does he need an invitation before, during the first day, before the seven days, and he doesn't need an invitation afterwards? I don't know. Well, you, that's, what the, that's what the Ramban has just done. He says he needed the invitation on day one, maybe just because Hashem was telling him, from now on you don't need an invitation, I'm inviting you to come. You know, you, you're, you're allowed to come. Mm -hmm. he, he was afraid to come the first time. You know? I mean, he seems like he says, before that, Kodem Bechein, he was invited. Right? Was there, uh, was there any stain on Har Sinai or in the, uh, in the Mishkan where there was such a uh, impenetrable, or was it impenetrable, um, Anan, that Moshe could, could not go in? Could not. Right. Any, uh, any other time other than this? He says this one time only. Right? Aya ze. It only happened that day. What about when he was teaching each other on top of Masjidah? He was invited to come into the cloud and Hashem and stayed with God for 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah, that's what he did. There. Uh, also by invitation. He says, right? Come on up to me. So it's a little it's a little baffling, no? If we put it in sequence, Hashem tells Moshe, come in and practice the Korbanot on day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he invites him to come in, right, to do that inside the Mishkan. There's no cloud of glory yet, and there's no and there's no anat. The practice before mm -hmm. the Mishkan mm -hmm. is consecrated. Then he says to Moshe, "Okay, Aaron is going to do it now on the eighth day." Aaron goes and does it. It doesn't quite complete until the afternoon, right? And Moshe goes in with Aaron to ask for Hashem to come down, and they come out together. The two of them come out to bless the people. We will read that in Shmini later on. They come out to bless the people, and as they are outside. A fire comes down and consumes the korbanot that um, Aaron had brought inside. And the people cheer and go crazy, you know, celebrating. And the cloud comes down and covers the entire Mishkan. And the Kvod Hashem covers, is filled the Mishkan, what we just now read. That's going to happen after Shemini, right? And at that point, Moshe could no longer go in. Because the cloud and the Mishkan and the glory was in the Mishkan. Could not go in. But that was only now, at this point. Don't think, the Ramban is trying to tell you, that this cloud and this filling of the Mishkan was like that every day. It wasn't. It was only this time. After this, something is condensed. Something is different, right? The, the Anan is hovering instead of covering everything. And the glory of God is not Malayat Mishkan, but it's, I don't know, in Kodesh Kodeshim, or it withdraws in a certain way, whatever, right? 
And then, when that happens, maybe after an hour, I don't know, right? After the first time, maybe after a day, it doesn't say, right? After that, Moshe could go in, and Hashem would speak to him from the Kaporet. He doesn't go into the Kodesh Kodeshim, it appears, it sounds like. Hashem would speak to him from the Kaporet, from, the, from above the Kuvim, right? To him, but that's what it says. Bena Kuvim, the Bena Kuvim, the Ver, right, the Ver, right? And the Kohanim go in every day to do the service and to light the menorah and to do everything. And then once a year, the Kohen Gadol goes not only there when nobody else is around, all the other Kohanim leave the Mishkan, Yom Kippur. He does that last climactic event of taking the Ketoret, going into the Kodesh Kodeshim and lighting the Ketoret, and then speaking, doing the Zbidui, the confession, and then he comes out. Even Moshe is not there at that time. The Ishloi, the Ish, they say, is even the most important one. Right? Even Moshe himself is not there. Right? Okay. And no, and no angels. Remember we talked about that? The Ish, that's why he had the bells. Mm -hmm. Because when even the angels are chased out there. He's going in for a private meeting with God. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, so why he needed the invitation on day one? But he was invited in such a way that from now on you don't need an invitation, right? Come in, I want to talk to you, and I want to tell you that from now on you can come in. <laughs> Sounds like nobody doesn't need an invitation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I get the refrain. <laughs> then, if you want to, it's 8.49, that we're... we're when, how are we doing? How are you doing? Do you have writing to do tonight? Uh, no, I, I think that's going to have. Woo! So, what do you want to do? I need to do it by 9 o'clock. Okay, so we got 11 minutes. So, so there is a um, Ramban, he says here. Well, so far, it's been gorgeous, no? Mm hmm. Yes, yes. So, he says, the, the moment. That what is what happened the moment what is the timing of the Mishkan was completed and the Shekhinah comes. So in chapter 40, verse 2, he says, now this is going to be a little long, so I don't know if we're going to be able to finish this. Verse 2, 2, Tatkuv Lamad Hey, he's got here. Biyom Hakodesh Arishon, Be'echad Lachodesh Takim, Eta Mishkan Oven. No, we did this last year. Remember the complexity about which day are we talking about? Is it before Rosh Chodesh Nisan, mm -hmm. for seven days, ending on Rosh Chodesh Nisan itself, was that the climax, or was he told on Rosh Chodesh Nisan to do this, mm -hmm. and then the climax is the eighth? Do you remember this? Uh, I don't know. Yes, yes. I don't know. I don't know if this is yes. going to be the, the when, worthwhile, because it goes on and on and on. Yeah, it, this goes for two and a half pages. And we never got the, the land. Well, I don't know. So what else? Avodat Hashem be'esem asiyat ha'kelim. Oh, well, you could do that with this one. Lamed Zayin, chapter 39, verse 37. Verse 37, 39, 37. So, so there he says, 37? He lands. 39, 39, verse 37. You see that? That's only a few lines. Kainasu. Uh, Kainasu, right there. See it? Do you see it? The, it's the middle of the commentary of the Ramban on, on verse 37. Do you see it? You see the middle of the paragraph? Yeah. Thus did the Jewish people do all of the work. See it? Kainasu. The middle of that paragraph. 37, 37. Why are you going to the middle? Yeah, bum, bum, bum. Even? Yeah. Eh? But they skipped something here. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Just take a look at that. 37. 39, 37. 39. 
37, 37, one page back. It's above the minority. Where's 37? Right here. here. Okay. So did the children of Israel all the labor. Oh, 42, actually, for some reason. Okay, that, that's what. Over there, 42. For some reason, he calls it 42. Okay, ready? Yes. et kol So did, or thus did, at the end, when they did this, right? The, so did the Bnei Israel do all that work. Now, work sounds like the labor to create these things that they have just reviewed, right? Mm -hmm. And Moshe saw that the Jewish people had done all the work. Well, they... And, and they did the work as well, right? There were volunteers who came to see Lev, remember? The ones who did the weaving, the ones who did the gold work, the ones who did the metal work, the ones who did the, 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 the tapestry work and everything, yeah? Okay. Kol okay. hamlechet That's That's what is meant by this pasuk. Moshe came in and he saw that the Jewish people had completed all the work, craftsmanship of the Mishkan. Vayikra'enu avodah. And we call that work. Labor, right? The work, the actual work. Lomar, ki asu ota la avodat Hashem anichbad. So he says there's a double entendre to the word avodah. Usually we say, ani olech la avodah, I'm going to work today. That's my work as a doctor, that's my work as a, as a parking lot attendant, whatever my work is, that's my work, avodah, right? But we know also that the, work, the word avodah in the Torah is often used as service. Service, mm -hmm. service of God, avodat Hashem. Right, the right. Levim. Right, that's avodat Hashem. La avodat, la avodat Hashem. Right, the, you, the Levim was chosen to serve God, to do God's work, so to speak. Right. Mm -hmm. So here he's trying to say that this malacha is called work. Malacha means is the skill, right? The skilled work. 